When I have a couple of vectors and I want to combine their results together, so if it's, for example, multiple forces acting on a body and I'm trying to find the sum of those forces there, I'm going to have to then find a way of adding together the two vectors and their contributions. So for example, with these two vectors here, which I'm calling v1 and v2, if I were to add them together, how would I go about that? Well, I could, for example, if I took just the length of this vector and this vector and added it together straightforwardly, then I would get something significantly longer, but would that be the same sort of thing? And of course, what would I do about the angular components? With the way I've drawn things here, if I were just to add these two together, you'd think, well, something's kind of pushing me upward and then something kind of pushing me downward. They're about the same height in both ways, but in opposite directions. So you think if I added them together, whatever result I'd have would be something kind of close to horizontal. So the way we're going to try to approach this is first we need to find a way of actually dealing with these vectors in parts. The key thing about a vector is that you can either treat it as a magnitude and a direction, or you can treat it as components. So if I had a coordinate system with, say, a positive x and y direction, and in particular my coordinate system is such that the x and y components are perpendicular to each other, this is important because this means that these would be independent components. For example, if I have up, down as one direction and left, uh, up, down and left, right as my two different directions. No matter how much I go left or right, that doesn't necessarily change how I change up and down at all. Similarly, I could jump up and down, but I don't necessarily move left or right when I do so. So these are independent of each other. That also means then that any vector I have with some sort of angle here that isn't perfectly horizontal or perpendicular is some component, some contribution of x and y components. So we want to figure out a way of taking this vector, breaking it into components, because if I do that, I then have everything, say, in the x direction, and I know that I can just add things if they're all in the same direction. That's just simple addition then. So the key thing of what I'm going to do is try to break down this first vector into its two components, an x component and a y component. V2 I'll do similarly and break it down into its x and y components. And then it'll be nice and easy that the sum of the two vectors will just be the sum of their individual components. So, how to get the components is the question. So, suppose we look at just a simple vector like so. The vector has some sort of length, a magnitude we would say, and the way we often symbolize the magnitude is by taking that vector here, we usually use this symbol here to say it's a vector, and put it in absolute value bars. This is our way of saying what is the magnitude of that, whatever length it has. When we have the length, we don't know anything about direction, the angle then, of course, tells us what the direction is supposed to be. So you can see that, for example, if this angle were really small, then the vector would be basically horizontal. If this angle here were close to 90 degrees, it would be completely in the vertical. So there's definitely some sort of angular dependence that makes it go between all, say, in the x direction and all in the y direction. So here's something that I could do is, instead of just having this one vector here, I could draw out the length, basically if I were shining a light above this vector and down, and it left some sort of shadow along the x direction. Similarly, I could do it then and see, okay, if I were just shining a light off to the left side here and uh, having light going towards the right, I would have some sort of shadow that would basically be the y component of this vector. So basically the x component is how much this vector moves to the left or right. This y component is how much this vector moves up and down. And in this case, I've actually formed a nice right triangle. Why is this important? This means that there is going to be some relationships between the x and y components I have here and the magnitude of this thing because that would be then the hypotenuse of a right triangle.
and also from trigonometry, I know ways of relating the angle to the sides of a right triangle. So with this particular setup, that if I have the side which is opposite the angle here is y, and I remember from trigonometry that sine of some angle, theta, is equal to the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, that would be the y component divided by the magnitude of our vector. And also cosine goes with the adjacent side to that angle over the hypotenuse. So that would be, in this case, the x component divided by the magnitude of our vector. And I could also do the tangent function. And that's supposed to be the opposite divided by the adjacent. In this case, y over x. And there's also a nice direct relationship between the sides of this because if we have a right triangle, we have the ability to use the Pythagorean theorem where the magnitude of that vector squared is equal to the sum of the squares of its components. So the size of the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the either of the or either the sides of that triangle. So why might this be important? Now, if I were to give you what the vector magnitude is, if I tell you, for example, it's a velocity vector of 12 meters per second, and I tell you the angle is 30 degrees, with these expressions here, we could use a little bit of trigonometry and algebra to solve what we would like. So, let's make ourselves a little bit of space, put this over here. If I wanted to find what is the y component, I could then use the first equation here, this with sine function, and just solve for y. In that case, then y is equal to the magnitude of this vector times sine theta. Similarly, I could do then find the x component, that would be v times cosine of theta. So now I have an relatively easy way of taking a magnitude and an angle and getting this into x and y components. Now I could have been given some other angle so suppose instead I wasn't given the angle here that's relative to the x-axis here. What if I were given the angle relative to the y-axis? Let's call that theta prime just to be different. Well, even with this setup, I can still form the same sort of right triangle as I did before. Here's the x component, here's the y component. But in this case, the side that is opposite sine prime is the x component, and the adjacent side is y. So I could still do the same sort of setup of using the same sorts of expressions, but with y prime and x and y kind of taking position turn around. So I could do the same and say, well, the y component is the magnitude cosine theta prime. x is equal to the magnitude of the vector sine of theta prime. So while it might be often the case, I'll give you the angle with respect to the horizontal. That may not necessarily be the case. So instead of just trying to memorize these rules here, look at the angle and say, what is the opposite side? What is the adjacent side? What if I wanted to go in reverse? What if I told you the x and y components and you wanted to find the magnitude and direction of this vector? Well, we could find the magnitude if we want to use the Pythagorean theorem. Its magnitude will just be the square root of sum of the squares of the sides. Not too bad. And suppose this is the angle I want to find here with respect to the horizontal in this case. I could use the uh, hypotenuse equation here and plug that in and use sine or cosine. 
but I could also just use the components as they are. So I know the opposite, I know the adjacent sides to that angle, which means that tangent of theta is equal to opposite, in this case y, divided by adjacent, which is x, so that the angle theta is equal to the arc tangent or inverse tangent of y over x. So with all this, I can now go between magnitude, direction to components. I can go from components to magnitude and direction. When I am adding together vectors, I'm going to be trying to adding together their components. So a problem might be I give you a couple of vectors, you decompose them into their x and y pieces, add their x pieces together, their y pieces together, and then put that to get then what is the new vector. That might seem like a lot of steps, but it's really the only way we can deal with having multiple dimensions and multiple components. And while this might, of course, be tedious by hand, this is very much what happens in computers. In fact, the word vector is often used in computer language. So program a computer, and this will do things extremely quickly and rigorously, and then you can have maybe more than two dimensions. Maybe you want to live in a 3D world, or maybe even crazy enough you want to live in a 4D world. We could try that out sometime, for, but not right now.